good to go on those. Now the next section we're going to go over is coordinate geometry and I want you to read from page 485 to 487 and I want you to work problems 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8. Okay, now I'd like to take a few minutes and cover coordinate geometry. Please turn to page 485 in your textbook and read along with me. Number seven, coordinate geometry. Coordinate geometry refers to the study of geometric figures using algebraic principles. The graph shown on the right is called the Cartesian coordinate plane. The graph consists of a pair of perpendicular lines called coordinate axes. The vertical axis is the y-axis and the horizontal axis is the x-axis. Let's see what it looks like on the board. We have a vertical line and a horizontal line. And the center of these two axes is known as the origin or zero. Numbers start from the origin and go right, left, up, and down. As you can see in my drawing, these numbers go to infinity. On the left, on the x-axis, Minus 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on and so forth. Going up on the y-axis, so on and so forth. So on and so forth. Now, at the bottom of page 485, it talks about quadrants. You'll notice the first quadrant, starting on the X and Y positive area, is called quadrant one. Number two, just to the left, Going counterclockwise is quadrant two. Quadrant three, just below. And quadrant four, on the lower right hand side of the axes. Now, to plot a point on the graph when given the coordinates, draw perpendicular lines from the number line coordinates to the point where the two lines intersect. So, if we want to represent these algebraically, any number, any point within these quadrants, all we do, draw parentheses, And we know if it's in the first quadrant, it's a plus or a positive x, because all the numbers to the right of the origin are positive, and a positive y, going up the scale on the y-axis. If we're in quadrant two, it would be negative x, positive y. Every number in this quadrant will be a negative value, comma, a positive value. In quadrant three, we'll have negative x, negative y. And in quadrant four, we will have positive x and negative y. So study this for a minute or so. Okay, now let's take a look at a few problems involving coordinate geometry. Turn to page 487 and let's try problem number one. Number one asks, which point shown as the coordinates negative three, positive two? Well, 
if you go negative 3 on the x-axis and up to positive 2 on the y-axis, you'll find this point right here, which is negative 3, positive 2 in this quadrant. So we know it's in quadrant number 2. And look on your, uh, the, the uh, graph right there uh, by number 1, and you'll see that C matches the coordinates negative 3, positive 2. So that would be choice C for number 1. Number 3, which point shown as the coordinates 2.5, negative 1. 2.5, negative 1. So we know it's going to be over here. That would be right about here, which would be point N. Look for point N, which is choice B for number three. Now I'd like you to turn the page and let's take a look at question five. On the test, they're going to ask you to find other points and the correct Y coordinate for point R is, they want the Y coordinate, so that would be negative seven, which is A on page 488. Now let's try seven. Problem number seven, find the distance between three eight and five eleven. To do that, you need to go over to page 486 and at the bottom of the page you'll see a formula. And it looks something like this. Distance represented by D equals Distance equal x, uh, uh, of the first set of coordinates, minus x of the second set of coordinates, pl squared, plus y of the first set of coordinates, minus y of the second set of coordinates, also squared. With this, we can find the distance between any two points on the coordinate, coordinate plane. So now let's try number seven. Find the distance between three eight and five eleven so all we do is plug in the oh by the way this this uh, formula can be found on page 896 of your textbook so don't worry about it you do not have to memorize this now let's try problem seven on page 488 Distance equal square root. That would be three minus five squared plus eight negative eleven. It's also squared. So let's work the problem. Distance equals square root of 3 negative 5 would be negative 2 squared plus 8 negative 11 would be negative 3 also squared. Now we know from algebra that this is a very easy problem to solve. 4 plus 9. Distance equal square root 13. 
the square root of 13. So the answer to number seven is choice C, square root of 13. Now let's try eight. You may see this type problem on the GED exam too. How far from the origin is the point three, four? Again, it's, an, it's another distance problem. So let's plug in the values and crank out the answer. Simple as that. We got two set of coordinates, three, four, and in this case, zero, zero, because we're talking about the origin. First thing we want to do plug in the values. And we get 3 minus negative 0 squared plus 4 negative 0 squared. D equals square root and you should know the square root of 25 is 5. So the answer for number 8 is C, 5. Now, let's take a look at inequalities. Go to page 441 and read